Hello and welcome to It's a Jungle Out There. In this episode, we're discussing fleas and tapeworm. Fleas are the most common external parasite of pets. They prefer warm, humid conditions and are often attracted by dogs and cat body heat. Once on a pet, they can spread anywhere that the pet goes, including the pet owner's home. As if fleas alone aren't bad enough, they may carry tapeworm larvae. So how does this work? Well, the adult flea will do a mighty leap and land onto your pet and start feeding. They'll then lay eggs. These will fall off the coat of your pet and into the environment. Once they hatch out into these larvae, they will then turn into pupae and sit there and wait for the next pet or warm body to sit down. They'll hatch into the adult flea, jump back onto the pet, and the whole cycle begins again. Here we are. Fleas, disgusting things, hopping around everywhere and waiting for their dinner. Blood, lovely blood, at least for them. Now, the adult fleas can be seen with the naked eye. They're a small wingless insect, approximately three millimeters in length. They have very powerful back legs, so they are modified for jumping and they can jump really high. They bite and then feed on the blood of their hosts. While feeding, they inject irritating substances into the skin that can cause itching, scratching, and skin irritation. And that's not all there is to know about fleas. Fleas vary in size quite considerably. The UK cat flea is the smallest, whereas the human flea is the biggest. Fleas can live for about 100 days and can produce 400 to 500 offspring in their lifetime. Nasty. Flea pupae can remain dormant up to two years, just waiting for a pet to come by. A flea can jump up to eight inches high. That is 150 times its own height. If you could do this, you'd be able to leap over skyscrapers. Everybody knows that. These are two little kittens that were found as strays and brought here to the Blue Cross of Victoria. And believe it or not, fleas on kittens this age can end up killing them because they get so many bites. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the sheer number of flea bites will rob them of all their blood. Um, and they get what we call flea bite anemia. And what happens is that with the sheer number of flea bites that they get, the fleas rob the cat of all the blood that it needs to keep it fit and healthy. And what if they eat the fleas? If they groom the fleas out of their coat, because that's what happens, that you know when they groom themselves, they accidentally ingest the fleas, Unfortunately, fleas also carry tapeworm because the tapeworm live inside the body of the flea and then they're being attacked from inside and out. This one's gone to sleep, I oh, think. Yeah. But how would you know that they've got tapeworms? Ah, that can be very difficult because... Very um, nasty too. Oh, well. very nasty as well because one of the first things that people notice is the little segments that come out the back end. What you're looking for is little white grains of rice in the stool that actually move. Um, and they are the segments that pass out of the tech worms, which are long and flat. Dogs and cats can accidentally swallow fleas whilst grooming. The flea is broken up, releasing the tapeworm larva, and this travels to the gut and attaches itself there with its head. Here it develops into an adult. It consists of a head and a neck, and then many segments. Each segment contains hundreds of eggs. Mature segments detach themselves and are shed in the poo. Once in the environment, the segments dry out and release the eggs. Flea larvae swallow the eggs and then develop into adult fleas inside their pupae, and the cycle continues. What people don't realise is that the adult fleas on cats and dogs are a tiny percentage of the total number of fleas living in your home. They carry very specific diseases, so myxomatosis in rabbits, um, Haemobartonella, which is infectious uh, anemia in cats, and uh, famously plague in people. A cat scratch disease is caused by Bartonellosis, Bartonella, which is a bacteria that's transmitted by cats. Now, cats carry the bacteria, but they're not really affected by it. People can be affected by it if it gets through open wounds or if they're attacked by cats through scratches. And that's why it's called cat scratch disease. 
Flea control is essential, not just for your pet's sake, but for the whole family. No one wants flea bites. Get your animals checked regularly and use an effective preventative product. If you have any concerns at all about fleas or any parasites, visit the itsajungle.co.uk website. There you'll find all the relevant information and you can even complete a risk assessment. Once you know what parasites your pet is at risk from, you can contact your own vet who will advise you from there.